Candyman 2021 was directed by Nia DaCosta and produced by Jordan Peele. The film was Nia DaCosta's second time directing a feature length and it followed The Little Woods 2019 in which she made her directorial debut. Candyman is actually a recreation of the 1992 film of the same name and a community-based horror. It stars Yahya Abdul-Mateen II and Tayana Paris. The film follows Anthony and his girlfriend Brianna who have moved into Cabrini Green, a gentrified neighborhood in Chicago. As an emerging artist, Anthony is enthralled by the horror story legend that is Candyman. But things go awry when he digs deeper into the story and inadvertently reactivates Candyman, forcing the community to relive their past horrors for yet another generation. I really enjoyed this film and I think that the awards and merits that it's received are very well deserved. I also especially appreciated Yaya's lead performance and Acosta's direction in Candyman. I just wish that the cinematography by John Gulasarian was given more attention by film critics and as well as uh, festivals and award ceremonies. If you're wondering what this movie is like as an experience, I would say you can definitely see the hand of Jordan Peele as both the writer and producer of the film, and that the lore aspect of the horror is really well infused both visually and story-wise. So if you're looking for a vibe like Get Out, but with a very cool and easy to follow story, Candyman is definitely for you. One of the aspects that I was super stoked to see was the puppeteering of paper figures for the folklore scenes. The director, Anita Costa, said that she was inspired by the artist, Kara Walker, for this element. And I think that she executed the look really well as director. It comes off as super creepy and unsettling, but also very visually appealing and aesthetic. I just can't stop picturing it in my mind with the hand guiding the characters. And one thing that it reminded me of specifically was the tale of the Deathly Hallows from Harry Potter. The cinematography of the film was also really solid and I think that the lighting was super important for it because of the way that the characters were silhouetted. It was done so expertly and it adds to the scary factor and also helps to differentiate between different moods in the film. And really it just guides the viewers on when they should be nervous and when they can feel safe, with some exception. <laughs> the score of the film is also super integral to it. I remember watching it at one point and it was pretty early on in the film and I just thought, wow, this scene is really heavily relying on the music, which isn't a bad thing and it was just really powerful. And that is of course thanks to Candyman's composer, the music artist Lichens. And although he hasn't done uh, work on a significant number of feature films, he has had independent music for a number of years that emanates the same sort of eerie vibe that the producers were looking for. And the music really ties it all together between these storytelling shadow puppet scenes and the real life horrors that they face. My main critique of this film comes through the storytelling aspect. And this may be because the film is just a remake or maybe it's because it was just in Nia DaCosta's interest, but it is somewhat conventional the way that information is presented and as it goes into the ending. And what I mean by that is it's pretty cut and dry, which is not what I was expecting coming from a film so heavily involved with Jordan Peele, who I would say is kind of known for having some depth and complexity um, when it comes to interpreting his movies. And being perfectly honest, I think that the conventional movies are great and the fact that it was so blunt didn't make it less enjoyable to me. Um, but I can understand why people might want a, uh, a little more to think about while watching after finishing, um, since this film didn't really give a lot of space for thought and different interpretations. Overall, I think that this film, uh, Candyman, was really well done and I look forward to seeing more of Nia DaCosta's work in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and that gives you a little bit of an idea of what to expect if you're thinking about watching Candyman 2021. All right, have a good one.